Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass and in today's video we're looking at my review of the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. So this is the sequel to the massively successful DJI Osmo that's been around for quite some time now. It's got a much lower price tag coming in at $129, however there are some caveats that you need to keep in mind with that with regards to things like the build quality. There are however a ton of improvements to the Osmo Mobile 2, like the fact that it has a built in rechargeable battery which also means that you can use it much like you would a power bank. So if you do need to charge your device on the go you've got the option to do so. Now it does charge with micro USB and I would have liked to see USB type C but it's not necessarily a huge issue as I've got a ton of micro USB cables hanging around. The charge itself is going to get you around 15 hours worth of use and it will charge from 0 to 100% in around 2 hours. You've also got a standard tripod thread on the bottom as well, so if you want to attach this to a tripod or monopod you've got the option to do so. Now although this is a gimbal designed to balance your device, you will need to do some of your own balancing beforehand before actually turning on the Osmo Mobile. For instance if you don't have your phone properly balanced, it's not going to have an even horizon line meaning that your footage is going to be a little bit crooked. Now you do also have the option with the new Osmo Mobile 2 of changing it from portrait to landscape as well just by undoing this knob here on the back, pulling it out and turning it around, you can then switch up the orientation any way that you want to. So if you want to get some really smooth video with your Instagram stories, this is definitely the device to get. I've actually found it most easy to use some sort of tripod to actually get the level that you need on the gimbal before turning it on. This one here from Manfrotto is really cheap, it can be used for a ton of different things as well and if you want to use any of the built in time lapse features with the Osmo for example, you are going to need some sort of tripod and this one does the job really well. Now getting the phone as balanced as possible before turning it on is going to do a couple of things. It's going to make your horizon straight but it's also going to save on battery as well as the gimbal doesn't really need to do too much work to keep it steady. Once you then turn it on you can see here that it is perfectly fine, everything's level and it's ready to go. So as you can see if I then actually pick up the gimbal and move it around you can see that it's then stable and it's doing exactly what I need to do to keep my phone as steady as possible. In regards to the controls on the Osmo they're really simple to use. You've got the joystick here on the top left hand corner which is going to allow you to pan left, right and also up and down but it can be a little bit awkward to get any sort of diagonal movement. You've also got a record button or take photo button as well that easily allows you to stop and start recordings. You can use the slider on the left hand side to get some really smooth movement when you're zooming in and out and that's something that you can't really get when using your device with pinch and zoom. If you're in the DJI app, a triple tap of the mode button is going to switch over to selfie mode. So again, you can easily see what you're going to be doing if you need to use this for a selfie camera, whether you're using it for vlogs or you just want to get your own perspective. Now the first movement that you have allows you to then actually move your gimbal around and then the device is going to follow wherever you move it to in a really smooth panning fashion. Whether that's up, down, left or right, you've got some really smooth movement here. If however you press in the mode button once, it's going to lock your device in place so I can move the gimbal around as much as I want to but the actual phone itself is going to stay exactly centered. Now I haven't really seen anyone talking about it online but you can if you want to turn the Osmo 2 upside down so you can get some of those low angles and it's still going to keep it stabilized. It does everything that it needs to in regards to the software and also with the gimbal itself to make sure that you've got that stable footage even if the Osmo 2 is completely upside down. Now I'm going to be doing a full cinematic video really shortly here on the channel so definitely subscribe for that in regards to test footage but I'm just going to give you a very quick example of how the footage looks direct from the Osmo using the Filmic Pro app. So as you can see here the actual video is very stable as you can see. Now this was just me walking around and I got some different shots and things and I got some low down shots holding the gimbal upside down as I mentioned and I also put it on the end of a monopod to get sort of like a crane action as you can see here going straight from the ground really high up in the sky which again is something you can't do just with your smartphone. I've also used it to pan around using the joystick as well and I also gave the portrait mode a go to see how that worked and again you can see here just how stable the video looks if you do want to use it for Instagram or Snapchat. Now there is a ton more in regards to features and functionality within the DJI Osmo app and using the Osmo Mobile 2 but I'm saving that for my full cinematic video so leave a thumbs up down below if that's something that you're looking forward to see. You've got a ton of different modes in regards to motion time lapse, hyperlapse, standard time lapse which look really awesome so I'm really looking forward to showing you guys. And that's going to do it for this video on the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. If you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. And if you've got any questions or comments or if there's anything you want to know about this gimbal let me know in the comments section or on Twitter at Copper vs Glass. 
Also, don't forget to follow me on all of my social networks from Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, which are going to be linked down below. Also, down there, you will find the subscribe button. So if you guys want to get all of the latest videos, that's the way to do it. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified any time that I post a new video. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass. Thanks very much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video.